It's hard to imagine what it must be like to live in the ocean. The waves crashing along our coast play host to so much life we cannot see. But seals are one of the rare creatures we can, spending time in both the big blue and on shore resting in plain sight. At low tide, there are certain, certain places that you can commonly see these animals hauled out. And really, it's, it's not because they're, they're very social. They're basically competing for that space um, so that they can rest, they can relax, they can recharge and get back out into the water. It's normal for seals to take a break on shore, but while the adults choose outcroppings away from people, naive youngsters prefer the beach because it's easier and they haven't experienced humans and dogs yet. Here along the Gulf of Maine, we can actually see four different species. Harbor and gray seals live here year round, while harp and hooded ice seals travel from the Arctic in winter. The pups with their big eyes and dog-like features, a magnet for humans who are supposed to stay at least 150 feet away. They have that cuteness factor, um, which can be hard. You know, in the case of pups that are still dependent on mom or newly weaned from mom, uh, they can often be very vocal as well, um, calling out for mom. You know, if they're newly weaned, they maybe haven't realized that mom isn't coming back. Um, or if they're dependent pups and they're hungry, they'll actively call out for mom as well. Um, so that can be hard for the public to see too because they look so helpless. The best thing that you can, that anyone can do when they encounter one of these animals on the beach is to call our hotline. Marine Mammal Rescue of New Hampshire, based at the Seco Science Center in Rye, is part of a network of agencies authorized by NOAA Fisheries to keep an eye on federally protected marine mammals that are spied from our border with Maine to Essex, Massachusetts to the south. We have that number set up so that anybody can reach out to us anytime they find a live or dead. Um, those are actually just as important to us as well. Uh, marine mammal. So basically that means seals, dolphins, whales, and porpoises. Remember Snowplow? She was a 40-ton humpback whale that washed up near Rye Harbor in 2016. They've dealt with over a thousand marine mammal cases since the program started in 2014, but mostly seals, averaging well over a hundred cases a year. Staffers and volunteers dispatched to every call, observing for 24 to 48 hours, hoping each will safely return to the water on their own. But sometimes they need help with either relocation or rescue. A young harp seal, nicknamed Tonks, beached in Rye in 2019, one of so many. Well-meaning citizens in most cases uh, probably picked her up and put her back in the water or by the water's edge and she wasn't ready. So she obviously had water in her lungs. Um, she was essentially starting to drown. Taken to the National Marine Life Center in Buzzards Bay to be rehabilitated. They named her Nymphadora Tonks. Harry Potter was their theme that year. And weeks later, Tonks was released back in Rye. The decision to actually physically pick up one of these seals off of the beach and bring it to rehabilitation, you know, it's, it's not a decision that we take lightly because it, if we can, we would optimally like to let nature take its course with these animals and let them uh, survive on their own out there. We, we don't want to interfere if we don't have to. Other seals like Mac and Pemi and Sako, among so many they've given another chance at life, all marked with numbered flipper tags before they're released in case they reappear somewhere. Males tagged on the left hind flipper, females on the right, but the opportunity for a new kind of tag, a first for the program, arriving by way of a five-month-old harp seal, nicknamed number 87, found injured on Jenna's Beach in December 2020. Number 87 had the facial wound uh, that was severely swollen, impacting that nostril, um, and also impacting the mouth a bit, but it also had pneumonia. Helped into a transport cage, they took some blood work and samples and drove him north to another rehab partner at Marine Mammal Rescue of Maine. Once they're put on antibiotics, they have to be off of all medication for a period of two weeks before they can be released. Um, so that takes a little bit of time as well, uh, but they also have a weight threshold that they have to gain, especially in the case of these younger animals that haven't really had a chance to thrive in the wild yet.
they referred to him often as a whippersnapper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but he was very, the, the point being, he was very energetic in rehab. Um, he was very eager to gain his weight back in fish that they were, they were feeding him. An ideal candidate for satellite tagging. Outfitted with a small satellite unit stuck to his back with epoxy. The epoxy, it's, it's, it's not, um, when you first put it on, the animal might notice it just initially. Um, and it, it is epoxy, so it's a little bit warm when you first put it on, but it's not, it's not truly harming that animal in any way. It would fall off naturally in a few months, but until then would help unlock mysteries of where they go when they're released. So on February 7th, 2021, somewhere near Portland, number 87, alongside another satellite tagged seal, wriggled back to the cold Atlantic, a little antenna wiggling along with them, proving number 87 to be a boy on the move. Each dot on this map representing a satellite pinged when they surface. The red dot, the other seal sticking around the coast of Maine, but number 87 in blue amazing them with how far he traveled in just a few weeks. He spent a little bit of time up in Maine, then came down to New Hampshire. Uh, I believe he was off of Boston, came around Cape Cod, and now he's somewhere uh, down, I would, I would say maybe 100 miles off of Long Island. We're trying to understand a little bit more about habitats that they use, uh, what their range is. Every creature they encounter has a story. Education is a big part of marine mammal rescue, helping us understand the many reasons we need to give them their space. These animals are known as sentinels of the sea or bioindicators. So basically, they can give us a glimpse into the ocean world or the big blue and let us know how the ecosystem is doing or how healthy or unhealthy it might be. They eat much of the same seafood we take out of the ocean and swim in some of the same water we do. It's hoped that after number 87, the program will tag at least one seal a year. It will help us gain our own data set as well here in New Hampshire to see what our animals have been doing when they get released. Um, it, you know, areas that they've been using, have some animals been using the same areas or haul out spots. Um, all of that is really important. Providing a deeper dive into the mysteries of the big blue.